Hi, this is a tutorial for creating a storyboard. I'm going to show you how to create a storyboard with three photos, but you could really choose any number of photos and any size storyboard. <clears throat> to begin with, we're going to open um, our background for the storyboard. A storyboard is basically just a collage of photos that just gives a story or has some different things. As you can see, I have three photos of um, my children at the beach. The first one is for the girls, uh, two, my children, and then two friends. And then the other two, I have one of uh, my daughter by herself and then my other daughter by herself. So we're going to make a storyboard. And most storyboards are usually um, 11 by 17. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to, you can do 11 by 17, you can do 16 by 20. It just depends on what you want to print the size. But for my class, uh, we are going to do 11 by 17 because we can actually get these printed if you want to create something as a Mother's Day gift or something for uh, Christmas or whatever holiday you're using this tutorial. So we're going to go file new blank file and the width of this it depends on if you want your storyboard to run um, up and down vertical or if you want it to go across horizontal. I want mine to go across so I'm going to select the width of 17 and the height of 11 so that mine is wider then it is taller. Make sure that your resolution is set at 300 and then push OK. So you'll create this workspace that I'm going to use to create the storyboard that I would like. Um, I am going to try to line it up to the best of my ability. So if you go up to view and put and click on grid, you will then um, make a grid around your photos. You also can make sure your ruler, view ruler, and then you can also see the size of your photos. Whoops. All right, so here is my workspace. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create places for my photos. I'm gonna do this using the elliptical or rectangular marquee tool. It is underneath the hand. If you hold rectangular marquee tool is what I'm going to use. So if you right click, you can see that you can also get an elliptical marquee tool, but I'm gonna use the rectangle tool right now. I also need a new layer to work on. Make sure you're not on your background. So please click create a new layer. Make sure you have two layers and that you're working on layer one. So I'm going to make sure I have that clicked and I'm going to create my middle spot because I want my um, this photo to be the main focal point of my photo and I'm going to uh, go in about four and a half inches and come all the way to about twelve and a half inches and I'm going to make sure that I've put that in the center to the best of my ability. I may change that later. But you can see that I call these marching ants. I'm then going to um, pick the paint bucket and I'm going to randomly pick a color. It doesn't matter what color, but you're going to make sure you're on layer one. Fill in that paint bucket. Then go back to your move tool. If you want, you could make it bigger or smaller depending on what um, proportions you need. The last thing that I'm going to do is then um, push control D and my marching ants will then go away. So I have my box ready to go. I also have two other pictures. I'm gonna make boxes for those, not on this layer. I have to push a new layer again. I'm gonna take my rectangle marquee tool and I'm gonna to try to make them relatively the same size as the boxes that I used before, but I'm gonna keep them apart. Oops. Um, all right, so I have that box. Again, I'm going to use my paint bucket. I'm going to paint in that box and then use Control D to deselect that. Now, here's the trick. I'm going to hold my Alt key. If you notice, when you hold your ALT, your Alt key, when I push that, it makes a double arrow. Well, when I I can click and drag, it will create that same size box. So I can come to the other side and it will make a copy of that layer. Notice I now have 
three boxes, three layers. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if I can kind of get these to go a little closer to each other and try to try to get them the same distance apart. Now there is a way that I can do that. I'm going to click the layer 2 copy. I'm going to hold my control key. I'm going to click layer 2 and I'm going to click layer 1, which allows me to select all of these. They now can move together and I'm going to try to align them so that they're the same. So up here, make sure your move tool is selected. I have my align and I'm going to align the top edges so that they really are all exactly aligned and then I'm going to distribute the horizontal centers it makes them now perfectly the same distance apart and now I can put that on my grid where I want them as closely equaled out as possible I'm going to move mine up a little bit because I think I want to put some words on it later. But you can do that later anyway. All right, so now I'm going to move and put my photos in those layers. So I'm going to click layer one, and that's my center photo. And I want this photo of the four girls to be in that. So I'm going to double click my photo, click on my move tool, and I'm going to drag the photo down to my storyboard. Now you'll notice that it put the photo in between the boxes right above the layer that I want. So, and I will adjust that in a minute, but I'm going to put it inside there. This is, we did this before, if you hold the control, the alt key, the alt key, and you hover between those, you'll get that double zero. If you click, you will then put that photo inside your box. And if it helps, you can turn off your grid so you can really see that photo. Now I'm going to move it inside that box so I really get the center. And then please don't ever use these middle handles to adjust a photo. You will squish the people and it looks really bad. You also can shrink them and make them look really funny and that looks really bad. Um, if you're going to move that, always use the corner handles because that will adjust the whole photo. So I'm going to zoom, come in a little bit so that I get that whole um, jumping feeling and I'm going to move them up using my rule of thirds. I'm kind of bringing that box into kind of thirds. So my horizon is at the top part and their feet is at the bottom part. So I have the photo the way that I'd like them to be now. I'm going to go ahead and add in my other two. And because Emma's on this side, I'm going to put her over here. So I'm going to double click that photo. Oops. First, I'm going to click which box I want her to go in. Double click that photo and bring that back down to there. Now this photo is not going to fit perfectly, but that's okay. I'm going to use my Alt key, hover, and put that in there. Now I want to adjust that a little bit. I'm use the corner handles and then move her. Now you can see I don't want to lose that um, part of putting her in there. She jumped so high, but I really want my ground to be in there so that you can really see that she was jumping, but I don't want any of that blue box to show. I need to make sure that all of my photo is inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there, I think like that, see if I can get her hands a little bit more. Excellent. There we go. And then I'm going to click on the last box to get Tori, who doesn't jump as high, and I'm going to bring that down to that box. Again, I'm going to notice it put it right above that box. they got to be right together. I'm going to click the Alt key so that those come together, and then I'm going to um, pull that down a little bit. I'm going to Tori didn't jump quite as high, and I'm going to try to put that in there. I'm going to adjust that a little bit, kind of shrink that in a little bit. And I try to keep my oceans together and my grounds together to make it look like... So it's a collage of those photos. Now there's some cool things that we can do with that, but for right now, that is the main storyboard, and I am running out of time. So I am going to... Um, go ahead and have you save this file, save as, 
and I'd like you to title it Storyboard and then save it as a Photoshop PSD so that we can go back and we can work on that later. Again, make sure that you are in your folder where you want that to be and make sure you save it as a PSD. So it should save, it's gonna keep all those layers together so that when I come back to work on that, I can work on it again. This has been a tutorial for how to set up a storyboard or collage of photos.